Hey guys, okay, so I know that there might not be a lot of people starting with me early on, but I still wanted to go ahead and get into cooking really quickly because I just finished making the baked scallops per plan. And if you saw my Instagram live, and you'll see every, not Instagram live, Insta stories, you'll see that I, hey Marissa, what's good? <laughs> You'll see that I um, definitely choose a different type of food to cook every Sunday. So here are the baked scallops. And then I'm going to take the same recipe from Aisha Curry's um, full plate recipe. And I'm not going to actually show you, but it is a book and it's called Baked Scallops. I'm going to take that same ingredients and put it on trout. But here are the baked scallops. So <clears throat> right here, hopefully this does not break. So wish me luck. But right here are the baked scallops that I cooked earlier and I'm gonna take the same method and I like scallops but my you know my husband likes uh, trout so we're gonna take the same concept that I did on my Instagram live and I'm actually going to go ahead and apply it to the actual trout so let me put this behind me so the first thing that this recipe calls for is for the oven to be at 350 degrees and it is a very low oven, but with all of the things that you're adding on top of the trout, I'm telling you, um, you definitely want it low because you do not want your panko crumbs to crust over, I mean crust over and get burned and all that type of good stuff. So let's kind of get into the ingredients and what I do and do not like so far of the recipe that I see. So what I love so far of looking at this book full plate, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the front full plate and we are doing this recipe today. So she asked for wine, Italian seasoning, and um, of course, some of the Parmigiano Reggiano. So I like that part so far. Now she packs on the pounds because she also asked for olive oil and butter. And I'm just kind of like, okay sis, both. Thanks girl, get it, what's up? <laughs> so she asked for both um you know butter and olive oil i think that's a lot but whenever i actually made the scallops it was definitely necessary and it actually complemented and came all together i'm not a huge tomato fan either but she asked for tomatoes so i was like okay well let's go ahead and do it so i actually ran out of the bigger or the darker cherry tomatoes but i'm also going to use the rest of these um lighter tomatoes and uh, bright red tomatoes. So we're gonna see what it feel, uh, tastes like with this trout. The other thing that I'm adding, and it's not in the recipe, is flax seeds. So I am 30 plus now. So I need flax seeds to get my system going and you can put it in anything and everything. So I just love to show the versatility of flax seeds. And it will not take away from this recipe because there is a roasted and toasted element to all flax seeds whenever I break it down. But I wanted to, and I almost ran out of Italian seasoning um, that I make, um, so I almost ran out of it on my Instagram. So I'm gonna make some more now. So once you look inside of my actual blender, you'll see that there is some already in there. But just know that it's not old. I just made it like probably an hour ago. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So this is the remaining amount that I have in there. And I'm gonna actually flatten this out a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk about the Italian seasonings. Usually Italian seasonings involve, of course, garlic, salt, pepper, rosemary, basil, and oregano, and a chili powder. However, comma, I do not have um, oregano, so we're just gonna make do with what's in my pantry, but if you definitely have it, you can make your own Italian seasoning or you can purchase the blend as well within the store. So generally, I start off with salt first. And if this is a Himalayan salt, and I love the taste of Himalayan salt because it's very robust. But, you know, I start off with salt first because you do not want to forget salt in your recipe. So if you start with salt, you never have to worry about that flavor not being there. So then I back it up with some peppercorns. And I'm going to, of course, pulsate this into a smaller peppercorn, of course. But whenever you start with the peppercorn, you'll get the best peppery taste or mean feel as you know within your recipe so i'm going to put two teaspoons and i did two teaspoons of salt as well now we're going to also put some thyme 
Now, some people put thyme in their Italian seasonings, others don't. I'm just putting, you know, this amount of thyme in there and it is so good. We're gonna just go ahead and put a teaspoon of that. We're not huge on the heat in our family, but so I'm gonna only do one teaspoon of crushed pepper. Um, you know, some people might do a little bit more or less. I'm sorry that this is all over the place, but you know, this is, this is all we need. Um, but just make sure you do not skip out on the crushed pepper flakes because that actually gives like the great base tone since we're not using cumin. Um, that gives a great base tone to this recipe. Now we are using real garlic, so we don't need that much, you know, garlic seasoning, but for the most part, you still want that flavor there and you just add it at only a teaspoon. And rosemary is one of those, is the next actual seasoning that we add. And I would use, honestly, I would use two or three teaspoons of seasoning. And um, this is a flavor you do not want to miss out on, oops, in your uh, recipe. So I say do not hold back, but do not do too much because you don't want it to turn away from the Italian seasoning flavor that you want. So be very, very cautious. And then we're going to follow this, y'all, this basil. Oops. This spoon fell in the basil. And I'm like, what's, what's good? You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> I don't know if you can see the spoon in there, but you want like a teaspoon of, of basil. So I'm trying, I'm going to take it out. So we're putting in a teaspoon of basil and I'm going to go fish for that spoon later. But basil is like, now I'm going into two teaspoons, but basil is one of those major flavors that you need within your um, Italian, what do you call it? Within your Italian seasoning. So we're going to put this on top. And pulse it one time and then the second time you can hear that it's not as like crumbly it's not you know a lot of uh, is breaking down actually is the best word and then we're gonna go for three and at this point you see that it's absolutely a fine texture and we are ready to <coughs> to season Woo! okay so we have our flavors boy when you lift up the actual top of your seasoning, y'all, um, you know, just pre be prepared. You might get choked because the pepper is very strong. So, you know, use with caution. Use with caution. So, okay. Let's shift gears. We have, and go back to the instructions now that we have our Italian seasoning and all of the other items are ready to be added. I want to show you the fish that we're going to actually be adorning with all of this great stuff. Um, this, I have the full trout because I'm not trying to cook this entire week, so I'm not going to play with little tidbits. I have like a full trout out here. And I start with the skin side up because I like to, you know, season the skin evenly. And then the rest of what is, um, you know, the rest of the fish on the other side, I want that to be you know, having the pretty side up. So in order to get the pretty side up, you have to put this side down first and flip over and end with the actual flesh out. So this is the trout. It's just the absolute beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. Um, and I'm gonna set that to the side. So we're gonna go into this bowl. And we're gonna back this up a little bit and bring it down. Okay, so the first thing, and that's just a little parsley. Okay, so the first thing that you want to put in your bowl is the Parmigiano, which is your cheese. And I'm so surprised I had some cheese left, left over from my Instagram Live with the scallops. So we just gonna go ahead and use that. And I love this cheese, and you can buy this at HEB by the way. I love this cheese because it's meltable, um, it's stringy, and the other cheese that you buy from Kraft is just, it's just not a good taste. It's a little too boxy, a lot of a lot of salt in that for some reason. It's still salt in this one, but this has a better, Parmigiano Reggiano has like the best flavor. And I wanna show you what I'm working with. Let me see. Oops, can you see? This is the brand, so if you're looking for a good cheese, please go to the cheese aisle in your deli. Um, you know, the processed meats, Kind of don't want to go in that direction 
The other thing that I want to also put in here is the wine. So the wine that I chose today is Vogo and it's a Pinot Grigio right here. And this is a pretty good wine. So it asks for a half a cup and you can kind of eyeball this. I wouldn't go too much because you know, you definitely don't want to have a lot left over because the instructions are very thorough. But go ahead and put your dry white wine. I did a Pinot Grigio and the, the actual wine that I chose was only $10. So definitely take your time in that. Um, and then of course it asks for your butter. butter. I was gonna say butter, but your butter. I melted it because I can be able to spread it better and it, you know, I just feel like it was thinkless a little bit, but it's kind of one of those implied. And then of course she asked for olive oil. And I think it was two tablespoons. So we're just gonna pour a little bit. So we have our butters and we have our cheeses in here as well. And then of course we're gonna add a couple of our other seasonings. So we have shallots and I'm gonna go ahead and show you my board guys. So we have we have our sweet peppers. This is not uh, what she asked for in the recipe, but sweet peppers are still very good. Variances with the actual harsher um, herbs like the garlic and the shallots and stuff. This kind of brings it down a bit with the tomatoes. Um, and then of course we have our shallots cut up and minced. And then we have our garlic and I used the elephant ear garlic for my recipe. And then of course we have the um, cilantro and the recipe called for cilantro at the end, but I'm gonna put cilantro at the beginning and I'm gonna put some at the end. So save half of your cilantro. And then of course the tomatoes are another thing that this recipe calls for. And lemons always go with fish. She did not ask for lemons, but I just cannot eat fish without the lemons. And the whole point of a lemon with a fish is to cut out that extra fishy taste. So, you know, roll with me if you want to. I'm just saying like, this is a, this is low key a hit. So let's go ahead and put most of this in the, in the bowl. And remember, keep half of your cilantro. All right, so now that we have the veggies and herbs, wine, butter, and cheese in here, we're gonna actually take a spoon, we're gonna mix this all together like this. And while it's kind of resting for a little bit, we're gonna add a little bit more seasonings early on. And I'm not gonna put a lot in here. This is like roughly a tablespoon. So this can cover all of what you're gonna cover within the, um, with, on the fish. Okay, so let's, let's let this sit for a little bit. Now, let's go over to our fish. And this is a huge deal. So with our fish, and let's see if this is a good shot. With our fish, she does not ask in her book to season any of the fish first, but when I made the scallops, I wish I would have seasoned it first. So we're gonna just take some time out to season this fish on the bottom. And I'm just gonna, you know, rub this in here. And then we're gonna push this to the side. Oops. And push this to the side. And we're gonna add our first layer. <clears throat> this first layer of the mixture, the Parmesan mixture we just made. We're gonna do a little bit more. And we wanna leave some for the end and then, um, cause we're gonna actually put this in thirds. So, and don't forget, some of the juices are very important, so you just don't want to miss out on the wine. All right, then of course, I'm gonna add 
the base or the, I guess to say the butt of the lemon down at the bottom. And we only really just need this much because we want to make sure that all of the flavors stay like cooked through the fish, up and through the fish. So it, I'm about to flip, flip this fish over and once it covers the actual lemons and the seasonings and things like that, it'll permeate through the fish. I'm gonna do this right here. And bam, this is the bed that was made for this fish. And I'm gonna actually wash my hands because we're gonna actually repeat real quick, hold on. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from the top again. And we're going to season the top of this fish. And we left a little bit of seasoning inside of here because we're gonna also put it in the panko crumbs. So we're gonna leave that how it is. I'm gonna take another third, oops, of this Parmesan mixture and put it on top of here and try to make sure it's even because you know when it, as it's cooking you do not want it to miss out on some of those flavors and you don't want the flavors to be so high to where it's not touching the fish the point is it's supposed to touch the fish here we go okay and you see the juices are falling in the cracks right here you know that's good good stuff and just to make sure that the juices actually do permeate i would actually do like small little slits you know you don't have to go too far in to make sure that those juices actually go straight through the fish i'm gonna tell you this is a hit this is a whole hit all right oops There we go. All right, so we're gonna shift gears. Look, I'm surprised I got someone still on here, hey. <laughs> we're gonna shift gears and talk about the panko crust, right? So the panko crust is better than the, and she asked for panko crust, which is great, because regular breadcrumbs are too thin and they soak up too fast. Panko crust is way more coarse and it soaks up way more juices, so. Panko crust is always a hit for me. Um, what you want to do, and like I said, you want to uh, utilize some of those seasonings that you put on the fish and you put it in the panko crust here. See? And like I said, I wanted to add the flax seeds and this is where the flax seeds come in. You have no idea that you're doing so great for your body with these flax seeds because it's kind of stuffed up in all of the butter, which is kind of a counterproductive, but who gonna check me? I'm just saying, who is gonna check me? <laughs> so I put about a good like one fourth of a, a cup of, you know, what do you call it? Flax seeds in there. The whole art of this is actually to make sure that it's evenly coated. So you have your seasonings, you have your panko crust, you have your flax seeds in here, and it's very, very even because you're about to put this actually in the mixture that we just made, the Parmesan mixture, and it's gonna soak up all of those flavors. Thank goodness we didn't put in too much salt because this thing could easily turn salty and we don't want that. Okay. Now let's go right here. Okay. Boom. Okay, so this is the Parmesan mix with the wine and the butter and the um, olive oil. And this is like a lot of juices, to be honest. Um, and that's why I put a lot of panko crumbs in here. You have to move fast or else you'll get a very gooey mess. Um, but So please don't let this soak and you let it sit. When you pour these crumbs in there, and I'm still mixing it a little bit. When you pour these crumbs in there, be prepared to pour this on your uh, fish immediately. And um, I'm low key tripping because, <laughs> I'm low key tripping because you do wanna set up the base before you put those panko crust, 
crumbs in there because you don't want to, uh, I'm telling you, do not, um, I promise you do not want your, um, what do you call it, your panko crumbs to get too wet. You're going to have like the gummiest mess on your, um, on your fish and it's just going to be so counterproductive. And you'll be like, why she told, why does she ain't say anything? And I'm going to be like, I meant to, my bad. Or, you know, I tried to save you or whatever. So, all right. So these are the white cherry tomatoes. I should be having more, but you know what I'm saying? You get the picture. This is the acidity of your dish. So this is a very balanced recipe. I'm gonna also put the lemon. Hold up. I'm gonna put the lemon on top as well. I'm gonna put the lemon underneath the panko crumb mixture. I mean, cause this, you know, we want to cut that fishiness completely out of this recipe. You know, you want it to have a fish effect, but we can't overdo it. Okay, so here we go. Y'all ready? Oh, she got the lid. Okay, so what we do is add it in like this. Take your fork. And you see how it immediately soaked it up? Luckily, it's not too much juices to make this gooey, but you just want it enough to saturate all of that beautiful mixture, that wine and butter and olive oil. You wanna pick that up like this. Here you go. And then work extremely fast to take it over here to this fish right here. Oops. And just set it out and you don't have to be perfect with this the whole point is that you're going to end up getting a great crumb and crust and we put some down here as well because i love the tail end of the fish oops let see you just add it on top and those crumbs will actually sweat as they you know crust up I'm trying to put it all out there here you go. And you just kind of set it, set it there. Boom. Oops. And I wouldn't waste anything here. And you see that you have this beautiful, a little bit of green. You do not need to um, also put um, foil on top of this recipe. It's not necessary. You just cook it for about a good ooh, 30 minutes on 350. And it'll be well worth your time. So here we go. I'm just trying to show you guys what we're working with. It's absolutely beautiful. All right. In saying that, that is my trout recipe. If you wanted to see how I also cooked up my, um, if you also want to see how I cooked up my scallops, please head over to my Instagram. It is an epic video. I really love this recipe. The scallops turned out extremely well, so I'm really excited about this trout. I'm going to share pictures and things like that on my Facebook Live. Again, I'm Ellie Janae, and I'm your space curator, and I love food. I love talking about food, and I have so much in store this year so it's going to be a slow rollout but we're starting off with sundays and finding different recipes on sundays and cooking them as well so if you have any desserts or food that you have in mind let me know feel free until then i am signing off talk to you guys later